Okay. We're in season three. We are going to be introduced to one of the most, to me personally, one of the most annoying, it's probably the worst out of, out of the five season main villains. And he has a really weird obsession with Cyborg. Let's go! So, yo, what's up, guys? The Insane Game for here to bring you season 3 Teen Titans. Third week. We going in. We going in. So, yeah, what's up, guys? Uh, it seems like you guys are really enjoying this, so we're just going to keep on going with it. Now, won't we? Um, so, let's talk about season 3 and let's get into it and explain some things. Uh, we have a few uh, more minor characters to introduce and a new villain to introduce who honestly does not fulfill the role that he should which would be to be around Slade's level or at least a little higher than it not so much so let's get into it so as I previously stated the seasons kind of revolve around certain titans first season was Robin second season was Terra you could say slash Beast Boy in some sense third season Cyborg now the whole thing with Cyborg is that up until this point, Cyborg has been going through this little identity crisis episodes where he would have his issues with being a human, his issues with being a robot, and a lot of that gets addressed in this season. The one thing we need to fix about Cyborg, which was these random human fucking robot complexes hey, he's been having throughout the first few seasons, gets addressed in this one because he gets his own, he gets his bad guy. I don't think he's really happy about his particular bad guy though, because the bad guy's kind of a weird rapist. And that's the other thing I, I don't think I've mentioned in the other reviews. We have had like big name bad guys for the end of each season. The last two seasons were Slade. This season is the first new one. This dude is known as Brother Blood. Remember how I said the Hive would become a big deal in, in the season one review? This is the big deal of that fucking whole plot point. This dude is the leader of the Hive Academy. So Jinx, Gizmo, Mammoth, all of them. Yeah, you. He's the teacher, if you want to call it that. I say call it that because really, he's not really teaching. He's more brainwashing. And his goal, I'm not totally sure what it is. Because that's the one thing about him I really don't like. There's a lot of things I don't like about Brother Blood. Uh, Brother Blood has a weirdly bad obsession with Cyborg, and it starts because of what the first episode in the season is. The first episode in the season is essentially them finally, you know, putting a tracking device on Jinx while they're like robbing a, while they're trying to rob a bank, and then they run off, and we see we get to figure out what the hive is. We introduce the hive, and so they want someone to go in there undercover and to see what the fuck they're planning which Cyborg volunteers and because he has like this new holographic generator so he can turn like all human and shit and he goes in there and he infiltrates it and this is where the brother blood stuff comes in because he becomes kind of the top of his class and almost gets brainwashed in there the only lucky thing about him is the fact that half his mind is robot so he brainwashed the human but he brainwashed the cyborg mind shit so you know they destroy the high they get the weapon that he was trying to make. Everything's cool, or so we think. Because Brother Blood is actually very, he's, 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 he's kind of a mixed bag as a bad guy. He has his moments because he manages to hack into Cyborg while Cyborg was trying to hack into the thing to figure out what he was stealing. And let's just say, from that kind of breeds a whole bunch of shit relating to Cyborg to blueprints. And his relationship with Brother Blood is like ridiculous now because this motherfucker keeps fucking with him. And the problem with fucking Brother Blood is that Brother Blood is really obsessed with Cyborg because Cyborg is the only character, well, not the only character, but the only dude to continually resist him. There is another also, it's also the mention that we also are reintroduced to Aqua Lad in the season because of situations that happened with Brother Blood. Um. I guess I should start talking about the side characters. Now, we've already been introduced to Aqualad, which is kind of like Beast Boy's mini rival. Uh, we know Speedy, who comes back in this season, who was kind of bullshit introduced in the uh, 
winner take all episode, the filler episode when they get like transported to like a whole bunch of heroes get transported and shit, and some villains, and they get transported to like this battle royale shit. We're introduced to Speedy there. He's returning, and we're also introduced to a few new characters. One of which tempted me as a fanboy. Because I am a hardcore Raven fanboy, if I, as I've already previously stated, but Bumblebee, hot damn. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Hot damn. <laughs> and she is a part of the new pairing that we get this season too. Cyborg x Bumblebee. I'm fine with that. And this next comment may be a little racist. I apologize for future tense. But black, black, love. Cyborg, you got good taste in women, dog. And she tempted me. She tempted me like a motherfucker. <laughs> and also, another new character, or character, I guess I should mention, would be the Moss E. Menos brothers. I guess is the best way to put them. They're pretty much these two little kids. One is like plus on his chest, the other one has minus on his chest. They're twins. And their whole power and shtick is, is that as long as they're touching, they're like fucking flash. They're just really fucking speedy and shit. Um, Bumblebee's whole thing is that she has like these quote unquote stingers that she can shot people. And she can shrink in size for whatever reason. I'm figuring it's because of the whole Bumblebee thing. And I don't need to really explain, but I haven't explained Speedy to you guys in video form. Speedy is the dude, pretty much, who has a whole bunch of different weapons in, in, in the form of arrows. Boxing gloves, explosions, freezing weapons and shit. And I'll be like, I can control the water and talk to fish. Those are really all the main new characters you really need to deal with because we've already you know, been, at this point you've seen the Hive, most of the Hive characters anyway, and Brother Blood it's kind of the reason why I don't like this season that much. Now, most of the episodes are fine, but like I, I would say, out of out of every my least favorite episodes in the season, um, I won't say is the actual, you know, the plot driven ones. But those weren't as good as the old ones. Like you had the Apprentice and Aftershock, and this one you have Titans East, which deals with you know, actually those new characters I mentioned: Speedy, Bumblebee. Uh, Aqualad, Mossy Minos, and shit. They, uh, they're chasing Brother Blood and to, uh, uh, Titan Z's. Well, actually, East City. And Cyborg is sent, is called to go over there and help them build a tower out there. And the whole stick with that really is, is that pretty much what it is, is that he, he gets offered to stay there as a leader of the group. And it kind of puts a whole bunch of strain on his relationship with Robin in there, which you've you kind of seen in and out of this season already. And then this whole thing about him being a man and him feeling like he's like he's accomplishing something, kind of like some. It's kind of like a, a kind of a pride thing with him, somewhat. And you see that relationship kind of go through as the season. I mean, as the season progresses and shit. But there's the one thing about the, the, this two-parter that I hate. There's one fucking thing I cannot stand. There's a scene, a very famous scene from season three, where Cyborg and Brother Blood are fighting. And up to this point, we've kind of guessed that Cyborg is getting his ass handed to him. Actually, the entire season, for the most part, Brother Blood was whooping his ass. Brother Blood kind of gains an insane advantage on his ass by, I don't know, I don't know, what's the best way to put it? Cutting off his fucking arms and legs and shit, and then catching all of his friends because of something crazy he does to himself within these two barters. But that's not what pisses me off. What pisses me off about this particular season is that when he freaks out and he grabs fucking Cyborg's core and shit, and he's like, what is in there? What is in your blueprints that makes you able to resist me? And he's like, it's not the blueprints, is it? It's me. My spirit. 
And then he pulls out this most hexed out, ridiculous ass situation where essentially what he ends up doing is he ends up fucking, what's the best way to put it? He pretty much becomes God for like 10 seconds because he fucking takes, he ends up like reforming his entire body for no goddamn reason and then proceeding to kick brother's, brother blood's ass by like, out of nowhere. Mind you, this entire fucking season, we've seen Brother Blood kick Cyborg's ass for the majority of the time. Of those fights, anyway. And he just kicks his ass. He breaks, I remember that. He breaks both of his hands, and then he proceeds to kick the shit out of Brother Blood. And this comes from his human spirit. Now, the way the cartoon quote unquote explains it is that Brother Blood was trying so much to hack into a cyborg that cyborg hacked into him, which for whatever reason allows him to steal mechanical parts from some of his minions and reform his fucking body and glow blue and fucking come out of nowhere and beat the shit out of him. The reforming body shit is ridiculous in itself, but the fact that you have him do that. On top of the fact that you have him get ridiculous, that for all of a sudden he can catch Brother Blood's punches and break his arms and shit, and then kick the shit out of him when he couldn't even land hits up until that point. That's that's just a little ridiculous to me. This, this is one of the main reasons why. What's that? Fucking Brother Blood's just way too obsessed with with. With Cyborg. Like, even Slade wasn't that obsessed with Robin. I mean, obviously, he, he switched gears in the course of a season. He went from Robin to Terra. I, I don't think Slade was obsessed. Brother Blood just quote unquote obsessed. He will not, he literally will not move on in his plans until he deals with Cyborg. Even though he is beating Cyborg's ass repetitively. Like, in a one on one fight, Cyborg isn't shit. There's also another thing I can mention is the whole thing with Bumblebee and uh, Cyborg is the same thing with Bumblebee repeatedly kicks Cyborg's ass and that's how their relationship kind of evolves because they end up kind of starting out hating each other. I like that relationship personally. But and that's one of the reasons why I don't like this theory. Bob Blood was not a good finishing villain. He was way too obsessed on one character for me, for my taste. And the final episode had a little ex out moment that kind of pissed me off with the season. But, to note some other noteworthy episodes in this season, my favorite episodes this season would have to be X, which brings it, which brings Red X back as like this, because, I mean, if you watched first season, this, I'm assuming you've watched first season if you're watching this, the whole deal with Red X, he actually comes back as an actual character, and we don't know who's inside the mask. This dude has an ass amount of mystery behind him, and I enjoyed the shit out of him. Plus, that he's kind of like a, He's an anti-hero, but he's not a villain. He's not an antagonist. He's just an anti-hero. He's not a dude trying to blow up the city. He's not trying to kill anybody. He's just trying to look out for him. And you see that repeatedly through the seasons. And I actually like his character for that. Another favorite episode would be is Haunted. And if I if if you watch season three, this should be almost everybody in everybody's top three favorite episodes of season three. It's the episode where he thought he. Would be he thought he was seeing Robin, and it hints, and it hints on season four. On top of that, if you you understand why have you seen Haunted, that's a favorite of mine. And Bunny Raven, those are my three favorites. Bunny Raven, because I have a have a obligatory Raven episode in there. Just other noteworthy ones would probably be Patrol, which is the episode Star for our quote unquote gets married in the Beast Within. Which kind of promotes Raven X Beast Boy, even though I don't really care for that pairing that much. I see it. I see hints of it, but I don't really care that much. And it also brings out a uh, new Power Beast Boy games that we only see maybe once after this, and it's in Season 4. And I'm actually looking forward to Season 4. So after this, we get to go to Season 4. If I had to say least favorite episodes for this season, though, it probably be I'm looking I'm like I'm looking at the I'm rocking the wiki while I'm reviewing. I would say my least favorite episode of season fucking three would probably be either Spellbound or Crash. I'm leaning towards Spellbound because by the end of 
Because I feel like Raven was way too fucking naive and spellbound, and it really pissed me off. It also is another episode that promotes Beast Boy X Raven, which kind of hurts me. But I don't fuck Melky or with a with a giant stick. Crash, I can kind of put up with a little bit more. The spellbound wasn't that huge of a fan of. This is a good episode. I just was not a fan of having her be that goddamn naive about it. Can I keep him? Meh, 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 nah, 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 nah. But wow, this review has actually gone on longer than the other ones. I am going to cut this off for right now. So. As like always, like the video if you liked it, favorite it if you like if you like it so goddamn much you want to come back and keep watching it and putting in your favorites and subscribe if you want to because eventually I'm just assuming the subscribe button is going to be a part of the screen. I actually might make that somewhat of a catchphrase for these overviews. Um, put your comments and your video responses are always motherfucking welcome. Tell me your favorite episodes. Tell me how you feel about the hack shit with Cyborg and the Tiny Titan East. Episodes part one, part two, which is the final, which is the whole thing. How you think of Brother Blood as a villain? Throw out your thoughts, throw out your opinions, let me know, sons and daughters. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go. Life's a game, play to win. Um, tighten out. Peace.